Hello and welcome. In this video, we will show you how to train a restricted Boltzmann machine using the TensorFlow library and how to visualize the reconstruction. In order to train an RBM, we have to maximize the product of probabilities assigned to the training set V, or equivalently, maximize the expected log probability of V. We can define the objective function as the average negative log likelihood and try to minimize it. To achieve this, we need the partial derivative of this function with respect to all of its parameters. And it can be shown that the equation is indirectly the weights and biases function, so minimization of the objective function here means optimizing the weight vector w. Due to this fact, we can use stochastic gradient descent to find the optimal weight and consequently minimize the objective function. The derivation gives us two terms, the positive and negative gradients. The positive gradient depends on observations, and the negative gradient depends only on the model. The positive gradient increases the probability of the training data, while the negative one decreases the probability of the samples generated by the model. These alterations on the probabilities are called the positive and negative phases. The negative phase is hard to compute, so we use a method called contrastive divergence, or CD, to approximate it. It's designed in such a way that, at the very least, the direction of the gradient estimate is somewhat accurate even when the size is not. During the calculation of CD, we have to use Gibbs sampling to sample from our model distribution. Contrastive divergence is actually a matrix of values that is computed and used to adjust values of the W matrix. Changing W incrementally leads to the training of W values. Then on each step, W is updated to a new value W prime by calculating W plus alpha times CDW. Here, alpha is some step rate known as the learning rate. The previous code cell implements contrastive divergence, and it sets the weight update formulas and the learning rate. Now we need to define the error function. We will be using the sum of the square difference between the data and its reconstruction. The cell below implements this. Now let's start and initialize the variables. Let's also run an iteration of training and observe its error. The following cell cuts the training data into batches and then trains across every element in the batch list for a certain number of epochs. At the end of training, a graph showing the error by batch number will be printed out. Altering the batch size or the number of epochs will influence the overall accuracy. Here are the weights after training. With the RBM trained, we can take each hidden unit and visualize the connections between that hidden unit and each element in the input vector. We'll plot these images with the next cell. Each tile in this image corresponds to a vector of connections between a hidden unit and the visible layer's units. As an example, let's look at one of the learned weights corresponding to one of the hidden units. In this particular square, the gray color represents weight equals zero, and the whiter it is, the more positive the weights are. This is important so we can see that this specific square can detect a feature, like a backslash type character, and we can see if it exists in the input. Let's look at an image reconstructed by our RBM. First, let's plot an image. Now let's put it through the net. And now we plot a reconstructed image. By now, you should understand how to train an RBM using TensorFlow and how to visualize the RBM's reconstruction. Thank you for watching this video. To practice and learn more, go to the lab and run the code for yourself.